Welcome to The Wedding Edit, a wedding planning podcast for the modern couple. We are your hosts, Kelly and Dana. So today we have the incredible Matt and Laura from Good Day Dwyer, photo and video team. Extraordinaires. Why do I say extraordinaire every every time we have someone on? She's um, extraordinary. Yeah. So welcome, guys. Thank Thanks you. for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having us. All right. So Laura, tell us what are the main benefits of couples booking a photo and video team? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think there's a few benefits, and it it goes like two parts to it. So there's benefits on the day, and there's benefits after. So like post wedding. Um, so we can chat a bit about both about it, but on the day it's like, um, for us having a team, husband and wife, it's very much like Cute sexual innuendos. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. We, we both know what each other like. Yeah, we, know we both what know what we like. need and we both know how to give it to each other. Is that this what you're trying is going to say? Really That's what well. I'm trying to say. Something along those lines. <laughs> um, no, I think it's um, when you have a partner that you work with and I guess for us it's not just like a working relationship. We're actually married as well. So it's kind of like a you get to know each other on a better level that it's more. She doesn't have to say my full name for me to know I'm in trouble. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be like Matthew Dwyer. Like, I was saying you don't have to. Oh, you you just look at me from um, from across like Glare, yeah. St. Yeah. Peter's Cathedral and I'll know. For sure. And I think that's the thing. I think we know like there's we know our roles on the day really mm. well and it's there's benefits to it in terms of um, just having everything covered. We know what each of us need to do. We can like look at each other and he'll be like, oh, shit, I've done something wrong. I don't, oh, he'll look at me and I'll be like, I have no idea what he's talking about. No, just it's kind of like you have those cues between each other that um, you you don't have to repeat things for couples. Um, do you want to say something? It's for, yeah. It's just like we – like for couples I think it's easy to know that we're – like we, we work well with each other. Like, yeah. I think we've been doing it long enough that we haven't killed each other so we, we must be doing something right when it comes yeah. to being able to like have a good time on a wedding day. And like for us, like the focus should never be from the couple's point of view on whether the videographer and photographer are getting along. And yeah. like we don't have this issue whether we're working together or working with another photographer or another videographer because we just – uh, no matter what happens, we're just we're there for one reason, and that's so the couple can have a good time. So for us, mm. like when we're working together, it's just it's easy for us to um, sort of understand where each other's at and just make sure we're doing the right thing for the couple. I guess. But yeah, yeah. What was the other part? You there was another part you were yeah, saying. Yeah. So benefit. the the second part, which I actually think is probably more important in terms of having a team work on your wedding, because. For us doing photos and videos, we actually work together post-wedding. So mm -hmm. in the editing of photos and videos, it's not um, two different companies doing your photos and videos. And that's not a problem. And it doesn't really matter if you have different styles So you, um, in terms of your photos and video. But when you have the same company working together, we actually both work on your photos and your video together as a couple. So the way that we edit together is um, Matt will most like mostly does the photos and I do the video editing and the same on the day like Matt will shoot the photos and I'll shoot the video but in terms of editing I'll drag Matt in and be like hey like I found this song and I put together this like you know skeleton timeline and do you think this like works with this couple you were there what do you think? In and terms of the dynamic of the music and all that kind of stuff, do you think it fits there? For the day. day. Um, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's a real team effort. Um, sometimes I'll do the selects on his album so he'll edit it's the handy. Photos. It's handy to have like because we're both there and we're both relative, well, most of the time we're experiencing the same thing, whether yeah. I'm like riding the back of a groomsman with a West End or whether you're just standing <laughs> in the corner. That has happened. Like <laughs> if there was so a funny. photograph of something like that, like it might be a terrible photograph, but uh, if you're there, like well, not saying it was me riding a groomsman, but if there was a photograph of something that happened and it wasn't a particularly great photograph, but what was happening, Laura knew that it was significant to them or something like that. It was a funny moment that happened in the day or whatever, like 
same with the video. It's like it's easy for us to sort of give any kind of contextual advice on on how the day's edited, I guess. Yeah, I think one of the other benefits of on a wedding day working together is that you can um, be a photographer or videographer and you can work with all different um, other photographers or videographers, but there's something in working together consistently and you you learn how that other photographer works. So for Matt, he works with um, a lot of photographers over and over again, mm -hmm. but you will come back to the fact that it's different when it's you and I together. When you say you work with lots of photographers, do you do video? Yeah, so like if, 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 you're I'm, working if with... I'm shooting video uh, and I'm working with another photographer, like – Largely, we're working with the same sort of group of photographers. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, guys, is there a financial benefit also to booking a photo and video team together from the same business? <laughs> yeah, there, I think there is. Yeah, uh, especially if we have to travel or something like that, because at this stage we still sleep in the same bed. <laughs> um, <laughs> Maybe not after this episode. One room. No. <laughs> one room. <laughs> But and we travel in the same car. Like, <laughs> what about the dogs and Goldie? <laughs> yeah, yeah, still only one babysitter. So. <laughs> no, that, there definitely is. I'll answer that one. <laughs> yeah. There definitely is. Um, we, for us personally, we discount our package a little bit if they book us for both photos and video. And that a lot of that is because it's um, both of us coming along. We have a lot of couples that book us for maybe like photos and then closer to the date we'll be like, oh, do you like, can you do video as well? Um, so we're, because it's both of us, we're just like, yeah, we can throw that on at any time or whatever else. But Maybe they, not like the day before. But. Yeah, there definitely <laughs> is a, a benefit to booking both. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess if you were having to travel for a wedding and stay overnight somewhere and you were charging them for accommodation, yeah. unless yeah. you guys wanted to splurge and get like a double yeah. adjoining yeah. rooms and just like <laughs> really, yeah, you know, wants to sleep, king doesn't bed doesn't each. want to listen to me snore or not or yeah. something like that. They'll just get like separate tent sites. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> camp She'll have the hotel, I'll be in my rooftop tent. <laughs> rooftop tent. <laughs> I love it. Swag. So a common misconception with a photo and video team sometimes, especially if you do separate packages, so if you do photo and if you do video and then you also do a package that is photo and video, some couples can think that, A, they'll get both of you if they just book photography and, B, they also think that if they book you for photography or videography that perhaps maybe the quality or the amount of photos will go down because there's not going to be two shooters, there's just going to be one. Can you talk us a bit about this? Uh, I think it is a misconception because uh, when when we're both there shooting, like we're both capable of doing either, mm -hmm. whether it's taking photos or video. Um, currently we use uh, the same camera to shoot photos as we do videos. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, so if Laura's in another spot in the house and Nonna's like hugging her daughter or something like whatever, uh, Laura can be shooting video of that and take a couple of quick photos while I'm in the other room, like taking photos of details or, or doing whatever. So there's like, it's like having an associate shooter for either in both ways. So does um, your camera do both photo and video? Because this yep. is mind-blowing to me. <laughs> yeah. We talked about this yeah. the other day. I, the, people wouldn't know. The average person wouldn't know that, I don't I know. Think. Like, And that's that's quite uh, evident when uh, and there would be lots of videographers that resonate with this when they're like on the dance floor <laughs> and they think you're taking a photo of them but yeah. you're actually taking video yeah. and they just stand there for like five yeah. seconds. You're like, and, yeah, and, got and it. Like, every got time it. I'm yeah. like, oh, I'm no. doing video. He's doing photos, yeah, like because yeah. they're like standing in front oh, of me, posing, no. and yeah. I'm like, yeah, no, it's not gonna work. Right oh, now. that yeah. would be so, so frustrating. It's it's, it's really quite funny. it's quite funny. Mm. I just kind of roll with mainly it mainly because you have but. a flash on the dance floor. Whereas like any other moment, I'd be like, sure, I'll take a photo, but yeah. because he has the flash on, I'll be like, I'm doing video, but you look good. In terms of the misconception, I think like. It's for us personally, if we book photos, um, generally Matt will shoot the photos by himself. Mm -hmm. I do come to some weddings and I'll second shoot, but we don't charge extra for that. But again, it is something that it's like if we do one, so we try and do photos or video, it's generally Matt going by mm -hmm. himself. Mm -hmm. If we do photo and video together, mm -hmm. it's both of us. Yeah. And um, I think 
to to have the fear that you're not getting enough if you have both of us come and we're covering off yeah. on both is um I think we've worked it out to a T and because we work like we work so closely together on everything we each know our role so well mm-hmm. that we don't miss out on anything mm-hmm. within a full day yeah so there'll be moments where I'll be like Matt's shooting and I think actually works to our be- like to a couple's benefit because Matt will be shooting details and Uh, Like you said before, he can flick to video and he'll take the video of that. Whereas I can be in another room capturing more moments that are happening. And if you had people, not mm -hmm. objects, yeah. Yeah. So if you had like the one person doing each, they would have to go um, and do the. There's more of a chance of missing out on stuff that happens. Absolutely. Um, Yeah. So the fact that we can sort of split up in the same household and we can Mm -hmm. sort of cover off on each other's roles. Even like throughout the day, it's a bit like that. So Mm -hmm. I can, he can be doing family photos and I can be going doing something else. I can be setting up all the stuff for a ceremony and stuff like that because that's one of the roles I've taken on. Yes. Is setting up all the tripods and all It's a big, like, Matt's way more technical than I am. So I, he gets frustrated because I'm so slow at doing a tripod (laughs) and like I'll do each leg and then even then I'm not pulling the legs out properly. So he, he, we just know that that's his role and I'm going to go do Mm -hmm. something else at that moment and it's kind of working between us um, as to what each of us needs to do. And Laura doesn't yeah. really stick out like me as the hobo does in a crowd. So, like, <laughs> oh when gosh. she's taking candid photos at the end of a ceremony, she can, like, sort of blend in, whereas, like, everybody <laughs> sees me coming. And they're just like, oh. I have this vision of you being like, I don't know if you've seen that meme where like it's the guy who has like the folded up chair and brings it and just like flicks it out to sit down on <laughs> no, it. No, I haven't. Yeah, with, a a tripod. Tripod. You with a tripod. With a tripod. So precise with it. I'm like, I'm not even going to touch it. Even packing yeah. up the gear, I will at the end of the reception, I will stand there and just wait for him and maybe put one or two things in yeah. the case. But he's so particular about yeah. each spot that I something get it. has Doug's to sit the in. Same. So I'm like. And I'm tired by that point. I'm I'm not allowed to help even though it will like take less time if I help it to Doug, it will take more time if I help him. Absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) So I think it is really important to add as well, couples are getting a discounted rate when they do book photo video like as a team. Yeah. Uh, But also if couples do have say like a tighter day when it comes to the timeline, I think then it's good for them to know that they can invest in something as like a second shooter or a second videographer. Yeah. And I know that you guys uh, yeah. would communicate that with them, but I think it's good for them to know that based on what they want for the day, what their timeline is, is what they should probably get. So sometimes you should really be, yeah, getting a second photographer yeah. if you think you're not going to have enough really. Yeah. And if they do have two shooters on the day, I think they should be paying for that. So if you both did go to a wedding, then they're getting like that massive benefit of having the two of you. But there's yeah. not going to be anything less if it, if you are doing photo and video together as yeah. well. Yeah. And I think one of the big things with like a timeline when we do photo and video is that we pump out the, the morning prep shots yeah. it's a little bit longer we kind of like I mean we are we very can, we relaxed. can sort of help the couple like plan their day yeah. a little uh more around uh having more time to do things like without having to rely on somebody else's schedule yeah, um, yeah. and like because uh, depending on what package they've booked with their photographer or other videographer or, or whatever it could be a shorter time frame or something like that so for us it's like it's easier to sort of go this is when we're both going to be there and when yeah. we're both going to leave. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, like, to me, that's, like, a little bit more of a peace of mind. Like, you don't have to really worry about, yeah. like, when the two entities are going to get yeah. there. It's just like, And if it's one's going to be running later or, yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. And some videographers, like, they do like to spend a bit more time doing things. So yeah. it is really good to have, yeah. yeah. A team that are just doing things on the same timeline. Yeah. yeah. And it sort of it gives us a little bit more creative freedom as well because mm-hmm. we can both talk about their day yeah, but as often as we to, like to. Yeah, like we don't exactly. have to. So we would catch up with other mm-hmm. other videographers or, or photographers and talk about like where like locations we're going to go, yeah. that kind of thing. But we're at home with each other 24-7. Yeah. So it's, if we're talking about somebody's day, it's like, oh, what do we, we want to do? Like yeah. is there anything that like we feel like we can do like in mm-hmm. terms of 
like yeah creative. I think that's one of the like one of the biggest perks as well is that you know we've got your wedding coming up with us and we're shooting both mm -hmm. we have full creative control over the mm -hmm. entire day and well as much as we work with you guys we find out what your style is we find mm -hmm. out what you are um, doing if there's anything extra is there something that's really important to you on your yeah. day and it's going okay this is what this couple's like this is their vibe this is what they're pulling together for their wedding day it's like let's you know what can we do that's different or how mm. can we be like super different or creative or think outside the box and yeah. we have that opportunity to kind of talk about that a lot more um, than what you would with another um, business as yeah. such. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to your style of photography and videography, is there a consistency that kind of comes with booking the two of you together? Yeah, I, I think we, starting off with just like colour, for instance, we, we, we both try and represent the colour the same way, uh, as natural as we can. Um, yeah. Uh, so there's consistency on those fronts as well. So you watch the video, the color is not going to be completely different to the color that you get in your photos. So mm, I think there's point. those two things. That's like that's probably the one of the main ones. Um, uh, I think the other one is uh, there's a there's a consistency in uh, how the how the, each image is framed. I, so I'm just trying to think of a way to say this that isn't so technical that yeah, no one's going to understand. <laughs> yeah, because you'll so, lose me. <laughs> like the type of lenses that we use are the same, uh, and okay. so they they are as wide or as tight as uh, as each other. That sounds. There you go. There's another one. Uh, <laughs> That's what um, she said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they they both look relatively the same, uh, and quite often we're shooting pretty close to each other. So there's there's some sort of um, consistency between. Uh, the moments that are captured um, uh, between the medium of video and photos. There's also, uh, I think, a very big difference in uh, how the video looks and how the photos look based on the fact that still image is a still image, mm -hmm. whereas a video, you're capturing all the moments like before and after that. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, photos is a medium where like you can freeze freeze a moment in time and there's all this emotion that can be attached with that and uh, and however that emotion is extracted from that photograph, it's depending on who's looking at it. Mm. But whereas if there's a moment, so like everybody watches these videos of like uh, a kid realising that their parents have brought home a puppy, like their first dog, <laughs> yeah, and everybody yeah. watches that, oh, I'm crying, whatever. Like mm -hmm. if you just took a picture of like a kid standing there and there's a dog at the front door, yeah. like you kind of don't really not. get the same idea yeah. as that like this kid's just freaking out, he's crying. Like yeah. the picture could make it look like the kid's terrified of the dog, but the video obviously <laughs> yeah. Yeah. captures this this side of emotion that you don't normally get in, in yeah. photos. So yeah. um, there is a... <laughs> Yum. Have you got breast milk on your hand? I know, right? You'd think. <laughs> yeah. Squirting. So Olive. I think there's 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 a lot of similarities uh in in the type of gear that we use uh and the way that we edit in terms of colour and the way uh it's framed in the image. I think it's important to know that Although um, when you book the same company, you will have a really nice um, consistency between style of photo and video. Yeah. There's not a problem with having different style of yeah. photos and video. So you can have, um, you know, like if that's, I think when it comes to it, if you're looking at someone's work and you go, I love that style of photos, but then the video, like I love the way that this company does that, then there's not a problem having a different in yeah. style and Composition yeah. and color, yeah. like yeah, that's that was true. really good. Yeah, yeah. I think that's yeah. true. I mean, well, because the we boys said it last week, they were like, they were kind of going all the other week. They were saying it's like you talking about Wade and yeah, yeah, like you can have it heaps. <clears throat> it's not good to have it heaps different, mm -hmm. but like Dan shoots with like I do cinema, I do cinema, but me, then with then us, with and Alec it's so Pratt, it's like, it's, like mm. it's true though as a it's as a non, non photography person. person I mean, I might like, I might prefer like your photography style and someone else's video. Yeah, style. exactly. Like, so like that could just come down to like yeah. nothing about the colour. Yeah. Like exactly. it might just be the it's way It's just the feel of it. Like, yeah. So it's kind know. of important. I think like, yeah, I think it, it just really matters what you like. 
Like yeah. if you like that style, then there's no reason why that photographer and that videographer can't work together. I think it's worth asking them if they've worked together before. Yeah. It's um, worse if you like someone else's style and then you're like, oh, they're too expensive. I'll go to this person absolutely. who's cheaper and ask yeah, them exactly. to replicate that person's style. Oh, yeah, that's, <gasps> that's horrible. Because I'm looking at the camera. For the listeners, I'm staring straight at the camera saying, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> No, because it, ha- it does happen a lot, like not from a photo video sense, but I've had couples that, yeah, from a flowers yeah, or whatever absolutely. perspective, it's yeah. like, oh, I like that florist work, but they're more expensive than that one. So I think I want to book the cheaper one absolutely. and get them to do that. And I'm like, but that's actually not going to work. Yeah, yes. can somebody give gonna- me a more <laughs> economical price? <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> you get what you pay for. <laughs> yes, you do. But then it's like, I mean, we've had people come to us and they'll show us a wedding video of someone and it's like, can you do a video like this? And I'll be like, okay, yeah, like absolutely. Like that's a really cool film. Like where are you getting married? And like, and it's polar opposite to what that video yeah. would look like. And I'm like, it's really hard to. The video is in Tuscany, but yeah. we're getting married in like, in, like, in, I don't know, like, like Alice like Alice Springs. On a farm. On a farm. Yeah, <laughs> <Alice> Springs. <laughs> I was yeah. trying to think. We're getting ready like, in the Hay Plains. Here's a video of Queenstown, New Zealand. Yes. <laughs> so I think it's I think it's really important to be realistic with what you're looking for in your wedding, but also what your wedding is actually going to look like as well and yeah. what, what style you like down mm-hmm. that road. So considering that you guys do photo and video and then together photo and video, mm-hmm. can you talk us through some of the packages that you offer? Absolutely. So we have a few different packages. One is the photo only package Mm -hmm. and then we do video only as well. And then we do a combined photo and video. Um, We like to limit that to a certain amount of bookings per season, mainly because of our workload and Mm -hmm. in post editing. Yeah. Just that edit lifestyle balance of having a family as well. Date night. Date night doesn't what's ever that? happen. <laughs> what? What's a date night? You're like, what's that? <laughs> That's the wedding reception when we sit down for oh, our meal. Yeah. For the service yeah. meal in yeah, the back of the venue. Yeah, for your supplier meal. Yeah. If someone plates it up for you Pretty like Pretty much I that's did. our date night. Um, <laughs> But, yeah, so we do photos by themselves, we do video by itself, and then we do a combined package. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Within those packages we have um, the photos, which is a full day package, um, and then the video we do two different packages. So we have a video package where we only do a short film and then we have a package where we do the short film and we do your full ceremony and your full speeches film. Mm-hmm. And how many photos are in the photo, photo package? Uh, I think I think in our like package it says like 600 plus but mm-hmm. I think I'm delivering most of the time in between 1,000 and 1,200 images which a is lot. a lot. Yeah, it's uh, a lot. I only got 400. So so it's a lot and like it's lot. basically uh, I will edit like duplicates as black and whites and oh, stuff like yeah. that. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so, and it's a little bit like the sh- short film will be like it's three to six minutes and I think generally at the moment most of our short films go from – like about seven to eight minutes, but we say three to six and we, we tell our couples this because some of them do ask about it and that we just say the examples that you can see is like on our Vimeo page is what, what it looks like and that's the short film packages. But we find that if something drastically goes wrong on a wedding day, then it's... Uh, even, or even if it's just a really short day. Yeah, um, if it's a short day, if like if the photo shoot, if it's pouring with rain, if something changes, something happens, it's kind of like it safeguards us a little bit in terms of getting the film package right. Mm-hmm. Um, but in saying that, we have done like extra shoots where we're like something went wrong so we're like, hey, let's like let's get Catch together day another after, day and yeah. we'll do something really creative and we yeah. can blend that into your wedding film and it will be amazing That's kind really of cool. thing. So yeah. yeah, okay. So do you guys offer any add-ons then to your packages as well? Yeah. Uh to both photos and video, mm. there's uh, we have a film package, I guess you could say, whether that be film photography. Uh, mm-hmm. So for anybody that doesn't know what that is, like that's what what your grandma what your used parents. to shoot. That's what existed before digital cameras did, um, and it's still <laughs> better than digital cameras. No cap, don't at me either. But it's uh, it's a fantastic medium for photography. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it does cost extra because there's like we're using precious earth minerals that are not really replenishable, but there's uh, um, 
there is definitely a benefit to having film photography. It's a different medium. It's it's also it's a little bit more uh, raw. How can I say it? No, it's a little bit more creative. Like because most of the yeah. time it's a different dynamic. Digital photography, we can basically hold down the trigger as you're laughing, and like. I don't know about you, but I don't have a really good laughing face. Yeah. Or even when I'm talking, like I swear, if I reckon if you still framed a bunch of images of me during this podcast, you'd see <laughs> like me half blinking with one eye or yeah. whatever. It would look horrible. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. in between a thousand images, there's probably like one good one of me. Yeah. But that's what this is sort of what we do when we're taking candid photos and in digital. Whereas when we're taking film photography, it's much more of a, a created moment. Like we'll. Uh, it's more interactive so like when we're taking portraits with a couple like they're helping us create something as opposed to with them just standing yeah, with there and us, do you have to us. direct the couple more if it's no film? not necessarily um uh because is it like sorry this is another non-photography sure. question yeah, no. is it like um more time consuming or do you use more film because you don't have that kind of digital where it's you a little can bit more like time consuming. Shot. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it would be more like we'll do because we do when we do film add-ons, we're still shooting digital. Yeah. So you are getting those digital uh, images at the same time. But there's more risk that like so, you don't know if you got the shot. No, no it's I've never it's no. double up. So it's yeah. kind of like we'll do digital and then Matt will have a moment where he's like, Oh shit, this is so good. Like I can think of something creative, I can do this, and he'll then go, hang on, like hold that, I'm literally just going to take like a film shot at the same time mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and whether that's like a double or triple exposure or something like yeah. fancy and creative, like the couples love it. I have a really mm-hmm. stupid question though. Like yes. are you actually shooting film on like the old school film camera that, you know, we all had, well I did, I'm showing my age, as in like, you know, you can't see the photo you've taken. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. Or are there new film cameras where you can actually see digitally the photo you've just no. taken? No. Oh, okay. No. Right. No, no I didn't so know that. It's, so the so the cameras it's, it's that we there's an element of risk. <laughs> so like I could go and get one of my cameras out of the bag and you would look at it and think it was a new camera. Mm. Um, so film cameras aren't like a lot of people think that film cameras are so old but they're actually like only – I think the last film camera was in 2017. It was like a Nikon yeah. uh, SLR. That was 2017 it was discontinued. So they were still making it up until that point right. as a professional yeah. f- uh, film photography camera. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, so it's not It's not. a lot of the time I am using an old one. So yeah. I've, got, like, I've got quite a few cameras that I'll use. But uh, depending on where we are and what we're doing will depend on what cameras I'm using. But mm. it is, yeah, you don't see the photo. But I have no doubt in my mind that it works. So, like, I don't take a photo and go, I hope that turns out because I know I'm <laughs> I like do. these settings, that ever, <laughs> I whatever. Would, it's, I would, yeah. It just my grandma works. still cuts everyone's heads <laughs> off just when works. she takes yeah. – she's still got her yeah. film camera. That's so good. I'm still learning how to do film photography. It's like the, 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 the technology in some of those old film cameras, like, supersedes the technology that we use on the cameras yeah. today. And it's um, a really, like, it's a real personal If something taste. goes wrong, you hear it or you know about it, whereas, like, yeah. a card could fail on your camera and you just lost everything, whereas if a, if a roll of film gets stuck in a camera, which has also never happened – to me at least, uh, you yeah. lose 10 thing. to 36 yeah. photos, not not a 1,000. Yeah. Um, right, so yeah. there's there's that as well. But um, We're getting so technical now, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. With all my well, like, so, so film photography for me, it's a passion of mine. So like outside of taking uh, wedding pictures and, and video, like I don't use my digital cameras at all. I only take right. film photography just because that's – a medium yeah. I love uh, yeah. and uh, I think it replicates the world we live in a lot better as well. Mm. Um, on the video side of things, we uh, also shoot film uh, and then we call it motion picture as in it takes, <laughs> on the camera that I use it takes 24 photos per second and turns it into a video. So it's a reel yeah. of film that rolls oh. through. So we take motion picture and everybody sees it as this like Instagram filter with the little hole on the side, but that's actually oh. a sprocket wheel. That's what takes the film through mechanically. Anyway, it's motion picture, so it's actually it's uh, multiple pictures being played over uh, like 24 frames or 24 yeah. pictures a second to create a video. Like a GIF? 
Yeah, like, like a gift. <laughs> oh, <I'm> Kelly. <laughs> what? Yeah, exactly. It's exactly like that. So is a gift is a gift is multiple pictures played in a sequence to make it look like it's a video. Yeah, right? yeah. and that's all that. Um, are you t- with your video motion picture type thing? Are you sort of trying to replicate the old style of film? It is. It does yeah. look old. It has an old style. So like you could look at mm. some film photography, and depending on the type of camera you use. You could get, like I've got a I've got a picture that I took on one of my cameras that's blown up to like twelve hundred, and that's one hundred and twenty centimeters, twelve hundred mil square, on my wall. Uh, so that was taken on a film camera, right. and so uh, that doesn't look old because right. it's taken on like a, a not a super grainy film, but it's taken on a camera that's super clear optics, whatever. The the motion picture camera that I use. Is like, I'm trying you, not to be too technical. You're losing me. You can tell that I'm I'm gone. Yeah. The, <laughs> it's called optics. it's called Super yeah, Eight. Like, so everyone like mm. Super Eight has sort of come back in a little bit. I shoot a lot of Super Eight mm. now. Um, what uh, is Super Eight? Super Eight is the motion picture film. Right. So uh, lots of people into it right now. Yeah, there is. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it's basically these little film cartridges that go in an old like it's. Yeah. They, they are very old. There's like 70s, 80s. I think they stopped in the 80s. Don't quote me on that. I was born in the 80s. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> but Am they, I old? Um, we are. <laughs> I'm talking about in comparison to some of the film okay, okay. photography cameras that I use. Um, but it's like an old-looking camera uh, and it sounds like it has like the rolling shutter sound. Can you so. give us the sound of what it makes? Yeah, I can on my phone. No, like. Do it with your mouth. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if I can do it with my mouth. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms of the video add-ons, we shoot uh, Super 8 motion picture as well. So that's something that uh, has sort of come back to a little bit more of a trend of recent years. Um, it's a bit more of an acquired taste. It is like unlike film photography, this does look quite vintage. Uh, it's a very small uh, strip of film, so it's like the quality of it isn't as good as digital, so uh, it does look old. Where can people see your work with Super So, like, you could go to our Vimeo site um, and uh, and see some examples of that. It's And we usually would shoot that in conjunction with digital footage as well and sort of work that in together. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so but it is, it, it like, it's something that really sort of fits into where you're getting married because uh, it, it is a certain style. So, like, if you had... Uh, um, I don't know, like a real modern wedding, like the Super 8 it does look quite vintage, so it can sort of conflict in some ways, I think. Yeah, okay. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, but it does look like, I mean, if like some of the Super 8, the best Super 8 stuff is like in the city, it just looks so cool. And it's like it's one of those things that we always mix it in with digital footage as well. So it's kind of there's a really nice ah. blend and marrying up of the two. It looks nice. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, what advice would you give to couples about planning their wedding? Just any advice that you've got. I say one thing is probably like just consult with your photographer slash videographer in terms of the timing of the day. Yeah. Um, uh, I think one thing that if if there's one piece of advice I could give people planning their wedding day is that you should give yourself more time than you need to do things. It's yeah, like the absolutely. quicker, the tighter you pile everything in, the faster your day goes and the faster you'll be standing there at your reception going, oh, I can't believe it's over. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So I'm like we had we had some friends of ours, we did their wedding and they they spaced things out and had an earlier ceremony just because they wanted to, they were just like, well, we're paying all this money, having this great day, but I won't see my husband or my fiancé until 4 o'clock. Mm. It's yeah. like the whole day's gone by 4 p.m., so they're just like, we wanted to see each other earlier. We can go do this and do whatever and then have a nice dinner later on kind of thing. I think it's it's just yeah. important giving yourself enough time because the last thing you want to do is feel like you've spent Rushed the day doing so much stuff but nothing of substance. Yeah. 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 I think one of the um, best advice that I would give couples is to really look at the photographer and videographer's portfolio and delve deep into their work and really work out is this the style that we want? Um, watch the wedding videos um, and watch several videos of that person's work and go, okay, I really love the way that they have put this 
couples together. Are you you can watch a wedding video and feel emotion of people that you don't even know. Yeah, you can. And you go, okay, this work is perfect. They've they've le- like they've learned what the couple is about. They've learned what their style is. They've they've worked out on the day what their story was and they've put it together in a really good film. So I think really looking at a person's portfolio is a great way to make Just that figuring decision. figuring out that you're making the right choice. Yeah. So I would love to hear about how you guys got started with photography um, and videography, but also how you got started doing it as husband and wife as well. Well, uh, I actually I was attending a wedding um, at Glen Ewan Estate and uh, a friend of mine's wedding, obviously, I was attending. So he uh, he had a photographer and videographer there and the videographer actually fell in the water at the bottom, like under the willow tree. <laughs> so I'd what? like, and he was like, it was like middle of winter, so it was like borderline hypothermia. Oh, no. So I like ended up like shooting the rest of the wedding for him. Um, what? You like picked it of, up and, and that was sort of how. Fell into what pond? Into the pond at the, the bottom of Glen Ewan. At Glen Ewan, yeah. yeah, down the bottom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it didn't really. I don't know how you're no, you joking. No, he didn't. He didn't. Oh my gosh, I genuinely believed it. What? No, I no. Was like, no. I, what? I, I, I shot a friend's. I'd I'd bought a camera, and <laughs> uh, I was shooting like a few videos just for like for whatever sake, fun. like just for fun. And uh, I was just like, oh, it'd be cool to sort of take some videos like that and make like a like a short film of his wedding instead. Uh. And uh, yeah, they um, they got married at Glen Ewan. Yeah. Um, no one fell in the water, but uh, that's sort of how I got started. And Laura was actually a bridesmaid at that wedding. We did not meet at that wedding. We just had mutual mm-hmm. friends. Um, oh, and she so you saw didn't me know do each that. Other yet? She saw no, me. We, we, we knew each other. Yeah. We knew each other. We just weren't dating. And yeah. uh, it sort of flows into how we started doing it together. We started doing it together because Laura saw what I did and thought. Oh, can make money out of that. So she <laughs> married me and now we both do it together. That's she how married you for the money? Like, oh, no, she married I you for the potential of making money. Yeah. Marry potential, yeah. <laughs> no. No, that's not true. That's not true. Uh, I'd <laughs> Kelly's like, where's all the truth in these stories? stories are just like, that is actually the truth. I, I did listening to Dan Evans. All of that was true <laughs> except for the part that Laura married me to make money off me. That's that's not true. But are we playing two truths and a lie? Do yes. we just like guess which well, one? We've, well, we've only yeah. lied yeah. too far. So it was, yeah, was Laura at that wedding? Or? Yeah, she I was. was. Wedding. So like it was my best friend's wedding. So I was in it and Matt shot it. And we we started off like, I mean, we weren't together then, but we have we did some other friends' weddings after that when we were dating. And I was like, we should make this into a business. Like let's see what, you know, where we can take it. And I think like when we first started, we were so like, we were like, oh, yeah, because Matt's a musician. So we were like, yeah, we can write music for wedding films. Oh, yeah, Nobody I had this great that. idea. <laughs> <laughs> I had this great idea. Oh, uh, oh. I could, it's not I could what write. if no one likes your music? <laughs> so literally the <laughs> first few wedding films we did, Matt wrote songs to And the couples were our friends. Did you sing they them loved too? It. Hey. Did you sing them too? No, no it was singing. just like guitar and a bit of like. It's just instrumental. Yeah. Oh, um, right. On the computer, but, right? Yeah, but then yeah. we were like, okay, this is not feasible. Like, well, Yeah, it not- <laughs> takes way too long. Um, <laughs> and, and we're not uh, making, we're not we're not making any money. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, if you were booking J-Lo, then maybe you would be making enough. I know, right? Exactly. <laughs> but, yeah, so, and then it and just progressed. And then we progressed. could get her to make the music. Yeah, yeah it just progressed from there into um, we did – we started off mainly doing video first and – then um, Matt had always had a passion for photography and, you know, he grew up doing a, a photography. At, um, <laughs> yes. I shot a friend's wedding and uh, just had a sort of an experiment and it was fun, it worked well and uh, then oh, like maybe a couple of years down the track we started dating mm-hmm. and in between then I'd done a couple more and Laura's just like, I think you should like Make this put your, your name out there to try and do a few of these a month. Um, or like whatever, as many as we can sort of book, see if it becomes a thing. And uh, like she just really wanted to pay off my gambling debt. But no. <laughs> she, God, stop it's lying. Not, it's not true. It's not true. But, um, <laughs> It was more. And pay for that tooth replacement yeah. as yeah. right now. Yeah, well, my tooth replaced. It's kind of like just escalated from there, didn't it? Like most people's story, you shot a friend's wedding and now, and you're, sort of now you're a videographer. Like yeah. It, yeah. it but, went down that road. So I'd, I'd sort of always 
not always, but I sort of grew up taking photos. Um, my mum, like, I mean, everyone's parents, like, if you're in our generation, your parents would take film photography. Mm, yeah. Doesn't mean they're a photographer. That's just how we took photos back then, mm. right? So I was always very interested in it because because of the technology and how the heck that light imprints on the silver crystals on a piece of plastic. Like, it just yeah. blew my mind. So I was always interested in it. And, um, uh, yeah, so... After shooting a few weddings on video, I thought like, oh, I might just get my feet wet in shooting photography. So we sort of put it out there and booked a couple like that and then just sort of went from there. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and I think yeah. it probably like escalated like to the point of going, okay, let's like really go hard and smash this. Was We like we shot a couple of weddings with Dan Evans and then I contacted Dan and was just like, oh, do you have like a wedding that I can like, send Matt to like overseas and so Matt went overseas with Dan to New Zealand and that was like one of your like most that favorite. Was, yeah, that was pretty fun. I, yeah. I was listening to that story. Yeah, yeah, the whole yeah, yeah he saw Everyone's it. stuff got stolen and yeah. crazy as wedding, but Man it was machete in the backyard. That, that <laughs> Honestly, and he never really talked through the machete thing because it kind of just ended that story. He yeah, like, oh, they to... thought it was a man with a machete, and then he just never went any further. You'll, yeah. you'll have well, to I still want them... to know the end of that story, Dan. You have to get them back on for that story, but yeah, it kind of escalated from there after that wedding. Um, and yeah, we went from there and we kind of, I think like in terms of us working together as a couple, like Matt's only just from December 2021, we're 22 now, 21, yeah. we, we've both gone full time on the business. So we've actually spent the whole like what, seven years of both of us working and yeah, we've only right. just started going full time mm -hmm. on was, the business together. That was more of a by choice thing. We yeah. Uh, sort of had a lifestyle that we liked, and then it it wasn't sort of suiting how much we were shooting. Mm. So yeah, um, we had to switch it up. Especially the introduction, we got a three year old daughter. Yeah. Uh, so like something had to change. So um, yeah, it's hard to juggle yeah. it all. Yeah. yeah, and so um, with the editing and that, I think Matt, like when we first started, Matt used to do all the editing himself, and I used to he'd be like, oh, massage my shoulders, it makes me edit better. <laughs> Honestly, it does. And then, it so does. I used to watch him edit these videos, and I'd be like, "I can do that." Like, and I so can do that better. I can do that. You're like watching while you're massaging, I going, know. "I can do it." No, fix that literally, up. Literally, like I could Photoshop do this way that faster out. than that. So I then started I basically, editing. I basically showed you how to like some of the simple things <laughs> yeah. in terms of the platform of the software that we used, and yeah. she figured it out. That's so that's and then started. yeah, and now it kind of has this really nice like blend of both of us working on the editing and filming and like I'll um I'll put certain things down in a timeline Matt still color grades all our films and yeah so it's like this really nice it's like if you talk to anybody that like is like a sole operator in terms of video like shoots and edits the whole thing uh they'll know that there's a lot of monotonous tasks in mm. video editing that is just like if somebody else does that and then you're just doing this part or and you can switch those roles up. It makes the process a lot more fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think it's like, you know. Bearable. Bearable, yeah. <laughs> you kind of work out your role. Like I'll do, I do all the admin and like the business side of it as well. Mm -hmm. And that frees Matt up. He's like a full bent creative, whereas I am more of like the creative slash strategic type person. So it's kind of like the blend of us both works really well. Yeah. A lot of the time. Yeah, <laughs> Laura. Laura can't operate past nine p.m. So um, fair enough. Whereas, I can't. Whereas I, eight. I like, I'm, I'm like ready Matt for my fourth coffee at eight p.m. 9 PM. And then I'll, then I'll be like, I'll wow. get into a groove at nine oh. o'clock, and then I'll be like, well, now I can't go to bed because yeah. I'm getting a lot of work done. Yeah. Oh wow. No, I yeah. can't do that. Not since kids. Well, yeah. that's my issue. So since since Goldie function. came along, it's kind of like a okay, you I can switch your whole like, yeah. time like yeah. Yeah. switches. And yeah. like, I was in bed at eight thirty last night on a Not Saturday night. So was I. <laughs> Joel was, was watching blissful. Collingwood because he's a Collingwood supporter. He was at like his oh, mate's yeah. place watching Collingwood. He was watching the football as well. I was, and I was the in bed. Last night. Yeah, but, yeah. I can't bear it. So, Matt, you know, if anyone's listened to our episode with Dan Evans. <laughs> <laughs> photography uh it's very clear that dan had a lot of stories that involved matt, matt yeah. uh, in them and they were all very 
bizarre. And I had to say to Matt today, are they? Is that real? Like it legitimate? Is, yeah. Because so, like, I just want to know. Like, we've heard some of Dan's stories that you know um, that he had that involved you, and not, and some didn't involve you. But um, what's the craziest, wildest, funniest, whatever wedding story you've got for us? Um, I don't, there's a there's a few, but. Like probably more recently we had a wedding together in the city, um, like really cool wedding as well. And we would, we'd just been, we'd been to see the groomsman, we'd seen the bride and we're like on the way to the ceremony in the city. And I'm parked at this intersection and I was like, I'm just giving you a precursor to this story because it involves Dan, but I'd seen this sort of interaction with a little Murray magpie in a vehicle across the road from me and I thought that's a bit strange. Like... There was a car parked at the intersection waiting to go and there was a Murray magpie just like attacking it. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's a bit weird. The car's not parked. So, you know, mm -hmm. some birds like fight the mirror, their reflection yeah, yeah. in the mirror. I thought that was happening but it was like a car in traffic. I was like, that's a bit strange that it's like <laughs> sort of latched onto this car that's in traffic. And uh, I was like, that's weird. Anyway, I park and I would go in, I start setting up my tripod and like Dan was like, I don't know, a couple of minutes behind me and he, <laughs> he called me and he's like, <laughs> he goes, Dad. Just got fucking pecked in the eye. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, what? And he goes, he's like, a bird just came down. He got out of the car and he like turned around and this Murray magpie just came up and pecked him straight in the eyeball. Like not, like he didn't blink or anything. It full smacked him in the eye. What happened to Dad? I don't oh, know. Oh, I don't oh, know. Oh. I've never seen one of those birds like aggressive ever. Yeah. Like they, like they don't even swoop those little magpies. They're just, yeah. they're just such picturing. friendly little birds. I'm just picturing. And now you can't him photograph anymore. I've got a no, photo, no. I'm I'm got a photo on my phone of like because he gets to the ceremony. I was just like, I was laughing, and then he got yeah. there and he showed me his eye, and there was like an actual like hole oh. in the white part of his eye, and it was bleeding. No, Ooh. no. And I was no. like, I've never seen that happen to an eyeball oh. before. Oh, that's, that's foul. So and uh, he has some crazy. So I was like, that's pretty crazy, and he's like. He's like, yeah, you can feel it, whatever. So that was at oh. the ceremony, right? So we go through the whole day. I can't. It was a pretty early was ceremony because it's winter. At that point? <laughs> yeah, and it was like, <laughs> so there's like quite a few hours go by, and we get to the reception. So it's night time. I think it's probably about seven, seven thirty at this point. And I'm like, I'm like, I was like, dude, it's like it looks worse. Like it's more bloodshot and stuff oh. like that. So he like we had like a little bit of a break in between speeches. So. The end, like towards the end of the night, you could go up to the back of Richmond Hotel and he's laying on his back and I'm <laughs> dropping in his eye a saline <laughs> solution <laughs> at the back of this wedding <laughs> reception. And like he couldn't like. He dropping went, saline in there just to clean it out or whatever. Yeah, yeah, because oh. like, I mean, you never know. Like, but he he came in. You never know where that beak's he went to the <laughs> He went to the chemist to get like a bot, like a, dro a dropper or something like that and he came back with like a half litre of <laughs> saline <laughs> solution <laughs> and it was like uh, and like he got the dropper that he got given was like not a dropper. So it was like more I had to like so try and laying. implement this so he's solution into his eye but with a garden over hose over the top almost. of him laying like putting drops into his eye. Yeah, <laughs> oh pretty <my> much. <laughs> Did you get caught? I'm waiting for the. I know, no, no. that's it. Someone walking on you. It was pretty open, so like everyone could pretty much see what was going on. Yeah. Um, but those but two yeah, shoot was, are wedding together and. <laughs> something happens to something, one of us all the time. And Dan's partner, Jazz, and I are at home texting each other, being like, have you heard what's happening to the boys tonight? <laughs> <laughs> it's so I bad. swear, I don't, Dan didn't tell us that story, but I'm sure he told it's us. Oh, it's only happens. Recently. Oh, it's that only happened recently. recently. Okay, yeah. Because I was going to say, he did tell us one where something dramatic happened to him. But I can't, I can't remember what it was, but it was what, some. Like, you have to, what about the time when he split his pants? Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. oh, no, he's told oh, that story. It's yeah. on the podcast. Did he, <laughs> yeah. did he say, like, the his part that the groomsman grabbed him off? The best man, yeah. Yeah, oh, that was funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm standing right there. I, yeah, I can't remember if I videoed that or not. Should, like, edit that in. Oh, my um, gosh, he's just had But, the... yeah, it was pretty funny. He, like, fought, like, he didn't just, like, rip them a little bit. He ripped them <laughs> off. Um, I mean, let's be honest. Just the wildest to take Dan, one was, Dan's clothing oh, no. off. We can't talk about that. <laughs> the wildest one. Yeah, yeah, that was we the that was that wasn't good. So, Laura, and Matt, you guys have been Matthew Dwyer Studio, and you've just recently changed your name to Good Day Dwyer, which is 
very exciting yes. and I'm so glad that it's not, you know, Laura working for Matt now. It's yeah. Matt and Laura <laughs> working together. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, <laughs> it didn't pay very well. <laughs> I wish it actually looked like that behind the scenes, but uh, yeah. I'm the one with the scars oh, from the whip on my back. But. <laughs> he is so whipped. <laughs> it should have been Laura the fire studio. Totally. Laura the fire studio, totally. Totally. Fire studio yeah. yeah. He's the talent really, though. That's the real name, Matt. <laughs> So we'd love to hear all about your new rebrand. The name is just brilliant. Good day, Dwyer. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so like cool. we didn't want to, we didn't want to remove our name completely from, like our branding. Yeah. Uh, but I also didn't want my first name in there because mm. I don't know. I just I got sick of anytime somebody asked me like, oh, what's your business name, Matt? I'd be like, Matthew Dwyer Studio. <laughs> Who's Matthew? And I'd, I'd always say, like, oh, it's just yeah. my name, Matthew Dwyer Studio. I'm like, oh, I just got sick of saying it. Yeah. Um, and, uh, <laughs> um, and like, that is not the main reason. <laughs> the main reason was is that, like, it's it, it was it's never been just me. Like, I think initially yeah. when we started the business, I was shooting the videos and editing the videos and stuff like that. But uh, Laura is often the person that when you email or – like go on the website, submissions, anything like that. Uh, usually Laura's the one that's answering those emails. Um, and uh, I think it was just we needed to be a little bit more inclusive because uh, everyone was just like, well, everybody <laughs> wants to meet Laura. Nobody wants to see Matt anymore. It's like, um, no, nah, it's it just needed to be a bit more Laura's inclusive. Laura's been promoted. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's now well, a shareholder. Thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are yeah. you getting paid more? No. <laughs> Unfortunately not. <laughs> no, she gets paid all of it. <laughs> nah. And I think we wanted to really like take the brand and the business to another level. So we were kind of like creatively like creatively. Take the brand to another level and creatively and just where we were pushing ourselves um as well. We just wanted to kind of launch something fresh and new, but still keep the name in it. And we yeah, that's when we came up with Good Day Dwyer just for something bit different, a bit fun, a bit of play on words. It's so cool. And I love it. Yeah. Mm. We had um, like Michael from Modern Studies. He's yeah. like an absolute legend. He did all our branding and everything like that. So, oh, right. yeah. We, is he like a graphic designer? Yeah. 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 Um, so he's amazing and we really just wanted something like fresh and not too stereotypical wedding like kind wedding of industry. And, yeah, we wanted to. Did he come up with your name or did you guys come no, up with No, we came it? up with a name. Yeah, it so took like, a long which, time to come up which with a is name. Like, which is almost <laughs> a hard thing. I don't know, like designers can probably tell me otherwise, but I think when when somebody comes to you with an idea of what they want, um, uh, often it can be like super conflicting. So uh, uh, like us already having a name and then going like, here, figure it out, is like it's pretty crazy what he managed to come up with. So, yeah, that's um, really cool. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we're pretty happy with it. The website is... Like depending on when you're listening to this, it's the like it done. may be up, but <laughs> it's uh it's uh in progress at the moment. But websites um, take so I long. Know. They do. Yeah. I think another. I think it's. Oh, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you're so bad no another part bad? of the like yeah he's, so, <laughs> he's like he's, he's so <laughs> naughty he's like get the whip out Tell me again. Like, <laughs> that's, that's where the whip mark comes from no <laughs> i think another part of the rebrand um and the restructure of everything was so we could um separate some of the businesses so we've got um good day dwyer which is focused on the weddings and then um, we have the bear club which is families and kids shoots and then we're going to um, soon to launch some of Matt's private photography just under Matthew Dwyer so it's kind Personal of Personal photography not oh, private shit. it's not like I have an OnlyFans <laughs> page that I sell my work on it's like <laughs> private, yeah. it's, it's personal work um, yeah uh, it's also corporate and yeah so what's that going to be called that's under just Matt Dwyer photography. Yeah. So it's kind of like we needed to, because that's just him selling prints and artwork, we wanted to go down that road for yeah. separate the businesses a little bit. Mm, yeah. yeah. Oh. Could actually say that um, part of the other reason we didn't go like Matthew Dwyer photography because that's not what my new name's going to be for the personal stuff because there's another guy in Australia, named Matthew Dwyer Photography, oh. who died. 
Really? Yeah. Um, he went on a photographic expedition and never came back, and then they found his body. Oh, rest in peace. Over in Western Australia. What and happened? we got the condolence we emails. We have no idea, but we were getting all these emails coming through yeah. about like We got we're emails so from like about- wildlife <laughs> Uh, oh, like magazines and stuff like yeah. that, messaging us if they could have a photo oh, of the quokka in the snow and stuff like that. And it was that. like this whole, like, the we quokka kept getting these the emails snow. about, like, like, so sorry to hear, like, your fa- family's and okay. And you're writing back, like, it's like, me, I'm, I'm back. Alive. <laughs> I'm like, I have two weddings. But yeah, yeah oh it was God, really, really like, it yeah, was because so Matt wasn't away when that happened. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, it was this strange season where we kind of got all these emails from So, like, that, that's been a little bit difficult to figure out what we're going to name the personal stuff. but. Um, Could you just say Matt Dwyer? Well, apparently, or not? Dwyer is just as popular as Smith. <laughs> so, yeah. like, Dwyer's, well, it's it's an Irish name. O'Dwyer Dwyer's. It all came from Ireland. So there's there's a few. I've of never heard, known anyone with Dwyer. Yeah, yeah. It's you guys, a lot of that. Well, I mean, it's, it's actually like one of the. Um, I don't know how you'd say it. One of the prominent names in Ireland in terms of there's like six family lines that. They were like one of the. So it's super common. Yeah, so they there. had like a few castles and estates and stuff like that. Like Newen. Yes. yes. Like yeah. seriously. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like, the they're known as like about the, a thousand years. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, I forget what the definition was, but they, they had like black kilts and stuff like that. And I was like, yeah, if I wore a kilt, I'd wear a black one. So it works. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us today on the podcast. Thanks for having That's us. Right. It's been amazing having you guys. You've had a good laugh. I know. <laughs> I've had a good pat. Yes, you've had a good Thanks, lick Olive. and pat. Yeah. From I've Olive. had a good lick. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. if you're looking for Good Day Dwyer, you can find them on Instagram at Good Day Dwyer <laughs> yeah. and uh, their website that. is gooddaydwyer.com. That's yeah. right. And they're yep. on Facebook yep. too. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's yep. it. Cool. Thank you for listening to The Wedding Edit, a wedding planning podcast for the modern couple. We'll be back with our next episode in two weeks.